Following the Second World War, there was a number of war crimes trials that aimed to bring justice for the crimes of the conflict. The most high-profile trials took place in Nuremberg, with the remaining members of the Nazi High Command facing the evidence of the Holocaust and their acts of aggression with regards to the conflict. However, there were a number of more specific trials held that aimed to deal with the perpetrators of the Holocaust and those which were aimed at dealing with those who worked at concentration camps. Hans Almeyer himself worked as a deputy commandant of Auschwitz, however fell from grace after he was found of bringing the SS into disrepute. Shocking considering how despicable the SS was as an organisation. Following his time at Auschwitz, he was then placed on trial, and join us today as we look at the vengeful execution of Hans Almeyer, the corrupt deputy of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. However, before we begin, I'd like to talk about today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Many of my viewers enjoy watching historical documentaries and films, and NordVPN can allow you access to movies, television series and documentaries from all around the world, simply by changing how your location appears. This allows you to unlock Netflix libraries and catalogues from all around the world, from within the comfort of your own home. Also, many of my viewers enjoy researching different topics, and NordVPN can allow you access to educational materials that sometimes can be annoyingly restricted behind a limit of how many articles you can read per day. With NordVPN, this would not be an issue, and you can access educational resources from all around the world, which I found very useful when researching my videos. It is extremely easy to use and your data also remains safe encrypted behind the virtual private network or VPN. This allows you to stay private online and ensures your digital footprint is secure and safe. It is available in 59 different countries and is incredibly fast, being the quickest VPN provider out there today. NordVPN is also available on every major platform such as Windows, Mac OS and even Android TVs. So don't hesitate today, grab the International VPN Day deal Go to nordvpn.com forward slash the untold past, link below in the description, or use my code the untold past at checkout to get a two year plan plus four additional months free with a huge discount. Hans Almeyer was born in August 1906 inside of a small German town. During his early life, he attended school in a normal manner, and then in 1918 left to become an apprentice fitter in a rifle factory near to his home. He lived close to Munich and in 1925 tried to join the Reichswehr, and following a short time where he travelled around major German cities, he became unemployed. He did go from job to job very quickly, and tried to take any work that came his way to survive and feed himself. He joined the Nazi party in December 1929, and then a few years later joined the SA, before becoming a driver for them. However, in December 1931, he was transferred across to the SS, and he worked here as a driver, and was then staffed to the head of the SS Heinrich Himmler. It would be Himmler who was notorious for his brutality with regards to persecution, and it was he who was responsible for the Holocaust along with the SS. He was well thought of within the organisation, and in February 1942, Hans Almeyer was transferred across to Auschwitz to work. Auschwitz was made up of three different main camps. The first, Auschwitz I, was the main labour camp, Auschwitz II Birkenau, the main extermination complex, and Auschwitz III Monowitz, the IG Farben work factory. As time went on, it transferred from being an ex-army barracks into the main killing and extermination centre of the Holocaust. And as the Second World War continued, it was a place where immense suffering and brutality occurred inside of the barbed wire fences. Inside of Auschwitz, thousands were assaulted and awfully beaten by the SS guards, and many more would not even make it inside of the camp. During selections when prisoners arrived there, those who were not fit enough were sent straight to the gas chambers minutes after arriving at Auschwitz. Hans Almeyer must have been well respected as he was transferred from being a driver to becoming the head of department 2 at Auschwitz I. Here he oversaw what occurred inside much of the main labour camp and he was known for being immensely savage and despicable. Almeyer developed a reputation for being a man who would happily torture and beat prisoners, sometimes to death. He also went about his day executing prisoners in public so that workers would be encouraged to get their heads down and work harder. For example, on the 19th of March 1942, Almeyer had ordered the deaths of 144 women. He had them rounded up and they were then marched to the execution wall between Block 10 and Block 11 at Auschwitz. Here the firing squad was assembled and they quickly executed the women in ruthless efficiency. Another incident like this occurred months later in May 1942, 
when Amar again was present at the mass execution of 168 prisoners. They were all shot in the same way as the women, being shot en masse between Block 10 and Block 11 at the execution wall. However, despite writing to the Deputy Commandant of Auschwitz, Hans Almeyer fell from grace inside of the camp. In August 1943, he was found guilty of corruption and even worse, the theft of gold from prisoners who had been sent to the camp. He was found to have been stealing gold and for this was transferred out of the camp by Rudolf Hirsch's orders. He left Auschwitz for a group of SS men who were responsible for building defensive fortifications and later in the war he then commanded thousands of Jewish men to build a concentration camp in Estonia. So despite being found guilty of crimes, he was leniently dealt with. He worked as a commandant of the Vyvara camp, but was evacuated in August 1944 as the Soviets advanced towards the area. He then found himself working for a police battalion in Latvia, but was asked if he could return to Dachau, where his old unit were working. This was all agreed and he suffered from an eye injury and was later hospitalised, and then he became the commandant of a new camp at Meissen. It's clear that Almeyer was trusted, especially with regards to setting up smaller camps. He had been told in January 1945 to oversee a camp in Oslo, but later worked alongside the Norwegian Red Cross and let the prisoners go free on the 7th of May 1945. His luck ran out though, as Hans Almeyer was arrested on the 11th of June 1945 as MI6 had gathered intelligence from Gestapo files that implicated him. When he was captured he was found in full SS uniform and he gave over his name, rank and seemed proud of what he'd done. He was then interrogated by the Americans before being handed over to the Polish for their war crimes trials. He was extradited there and was then placed on trial alongside 39 other war criminals who worked at Auschwitz as members of the SS. The trial lasted around three weeks from November to December 1947 and Almeyer believed he would possibly get away with it. He believed he would be made a scapegoat if he was sentenced to death. Evidence and eyewitness testimony was put forward about his crimes, including information that he had ordered the execution of hundreds at Auschwitz. Almeyer denied having killed anyone at the camp and even denied he had any knowledge of the gas chambers, but it was clear he was lying. On the 22nd of December he was sentenced to death and he was remanded in his prison cell for over a month before he was executed. On the 28th of January 1948, he was taken out of his cell at the prison in Krakow he was staying. He along with many who were sentenced to death at the trials, were then taken into the execution chamber. Inside the room it was rather simple, and there was no scaffold created, just a number of nooses that hanged from hooks in the ceiling. Along with a number of other defendants, Hans Almeyer was taken into the cell, and then told to stand on a chair. As he was helped up the chair, a hood was placed over his head, and then the noose was fastened around his neck. Quickly and sharply the chair he was stood on was then kicked out from underneath him, and Almeyer was left there hanging for minutes, suffocating to death, before he was pronounced dead and then was cut down. Hans Almeyer wasn't the only man who would lose his job inside of the concentration camps, as corruption and theft was rife inside the worst evils the world has ever seen. He was a despicable man who ordered the execution of hundreds, and who ruthlessly stole even gold from those he ordered to the gas chambers. Following the Second World War, the war crimes trials did aim to bring people like Almeyer to justice, but many did not face this, and never got their day in court, escaping before their day would arrive in front of a judge. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.